Hey, it's Mr. Lineski with uh, Unit 9, Section 2. Today we're going to be looking at arc measures um, of different circles, specifically central angles. Um, so a central angle um, of a circle is any angle whose vertex is at the center of the circle. So we're going to be looking at different angles occurring with circles. Um, and they're going to be in the vertex will be in different positions. So today we'll focus on what happens when it's in the center of the circle. Um, so we get what's called a central angle, and the measure of the arc that's intercepted by that central angle is going to be equal to the measure um, of the actual central angle. Um, we're going to look at three different types of central angles that sort of can create these different um, arcs. Um, if we have an angle that's measured that's less than 180 degrees, it is called a minor arc. Uh, we use two letters to describe that. I'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Um, if a central angle is greater than 180 degrees, then that is called a major arc. We use three letters to define that. Um, and then a uh, angle uh, with 180 degrees is called a semicircle. Um, and that can either use two or three letters to define. Uh, so down here I kind of have examples. This is an example of a minor arc. Um, and so here, uh, if I'm talking about the actual arc, so the arc is this piece right here, um, this part, but the angle right here, angle BAC, that's the central angle, if A is the center of that circle. Um, so if I said that, oh, this was 70 degrees, um, then that means that this arc out here would also have to be 70 degrees, arc BC. Uh, and the way that we write that for a minor arc is we write BC, and we draw a little arc above it. Um, so this is a minor arc. Over here um, is my example of a major arc. Um, and so let's say we wanted to talk about this arc right here, um, where if we went around the circle, sorry, hard to trace here, uh, if we went around this part of the circle here. Um, so typically we see the angle over here. Um, so let's just say that this was 100 degrees. Well, we're not interested in this part, we're interested in the part around it. So what you need to remember here is that a circle has 360 degrees. Um, and so if this was 100 degrees, that means there's 260 degrees from here to here. Um, and so this arc here, arc B, C, D, and that's how you would have to write that, arc B, C, D, with the little arc above it. So notice I used two letters here for a minor arc and then three letters here for a major arc. Um, and the arc, the first letter and the last letter should be where it starts and stops. And then the letter in the middle is just sort of one that gets caught in the middle of it. Um, and then here, so if we have a uh, diameter drawn through the circle, so BD is a diameter, it goes through the center and it's a chord, um, that creates the semicircle. Um, and so for the semicircle, uh, I can either call this arc BD or I can call this arc BCD. Either one's appropriate. BD typically would mean I go this way. BCD means I would go that way. But both of them would result in 180 degrees. Okay, so uh, moving on from this, kind of have a little example on where we actually use this information. Uh, so I'll kind of walk you through this very quickly. Um, so it says find the measure of each arc of circle P. So that's telling us that P is the center of the circle, um, where RT is a diameter. So we know we're going to have a semicircle if they're telling us there's a diameter somewhere. Um, so here we're given that arc RS is 110 degrees. So that's kind of what the first question is asking. What's the measure of arc RS? Uh, so that would be 110 because there's my central angle, so therefore the arc has to be 110 as well. I'll just write 110 out here. Um, TS, so TS is this piece here, and so there's a couple of approaches we can take to this. If you notice, uh, since this is a diameter, you know that from here to here has to equal 180 degrees because um, it's a semicircle, and so we can do 180 minus 110, and that will give you that that is 70 degrees. So this little arc piece here is 70. Um, arc RST, so RST tells you to go R to S to T, 
We just talked about that. That's a semicircle, 180 degrees. Uh, this one here, notice it's not an arc, it's an angle. They want to know what's the measure of angle TPS. So TPS is this angle here. And so we can use that central angle bit. Uh, if we know that the arc is 70 degrees, then the central angle also has to be 70 degrees. Or if you wanted to, you could have used a linear pair here and said that you know these two angles have to add up to 180. 180 minus 110 gives you 70. And then the final piece, uh, the final piece here is asking for um, R, arc RTS. Um, so arc RTS goes here to T to S. So it's this whole piece here. And we know from earlier that this is 70. Well, R to T is a semicircle as well, so that's 180 degrees. So to find RTS, you're just going to add these two numbers together, um, and that's going to give you 250 degrees. So that's sort of how you use those central angles and the different arc types to solve problems. Um, so there's something along with that that's called the arc addition postulate, and it basically is kind of what we talked about with uh, you know segment addition or angle addition. It's basically part plus part equals whole. So if I said arc BC plus arc uh, CD, that would be equivalent to arc BD. So kind of like angle addition where I say, you know, like this angle plus this angle gives me the whole thing. Same thing with arcs, you can do that. Um, congruent circles are just when two circles have the same radius. So if two circles uh, have the same measurement, you can say those circles are congruent. Um, congruent arcs are if two arcs ha also have the same measurement. Um, so we'll kind of talk about a little of that here. Um, so for this one, it says that uh, in the same circle or in congruent circles, two minor arcs are congruent if and only if their corresponding chords are congruent. Um, so here I can say that arc AB is congruent to arc CD, and that would be if and only if the segment or the chord um, AB is congruent to chord um, CD. So notice if these two chords are marked congruent, then I can say that this arc and this arc are also congruent. Um, so we'll take a look at an example of that and kind of go through what this looks like. Um, so we have circle E centered at E. We have the measure of arc uh, BD is 3x plus 11, and the measure of arc BC is 2x plus 48. Uh, and then they want us to find the following. So notice, since these chords are marked congruent, that means that these arcs, BD and BC, also have to be congruent. So that means I can set these equal to each other. Um, and set that equal to 2x plus 48. Um, and then so for this, um, what we can do is subtract uh, and solve for x. So we end up getting that x is equal to 37. And so now when it asks us what is the measure of arc BD, now we have to substitute 37 um, back into this problem. So 3 times 37 plus 11, and then solve. And so when you do that, you should get 122 um, degrees. So BC should be equal to that. And so you can check yourself by putting a 37 in for X, or if you trust your judgment, you can just say 122. So now I'm just going to draw on our figure over here that this is 122 and this is 122. Um, so now the next one is what's arc DC. So notice we didn't really do anything with this arc here, but it's, it's basically what's left over. Um, and so if it's what's left over in the circle, we can just do 360 uh, minus 122 minus 122, and that gives us uh, 116 degrees sort of left over here. So now I'll fill that in. Um, this one's now asking us for angle DEC. So DEC is this central angle right here. Notice E is in the middle, E is my center, the vertex is there. Uh, so central angles are congruent to the arcs. So arc and angle equal each other. Um, and then they want to know what arc BCD is. So BCD um, goes from, let me get a different color. Um, it goes from here, B, to C, to D. And basically, you're just going to add these two numbers together. So 122 um, plus 116 should give you 238. All right. 
Um, so now we're just going to go over a couple little properties here about circles. So it says um, if one chord is a perpendicular bisector of another chord, um, then the first chord is the diameter. Um, so if QS here is a perpendicular bisector of TR, then I can say that QS um, is the diameter of the circle. So remember, perpendicular bisector means that it meets at 90 degrees and cuts it in half. Um, down here, very similar, it says uh, if a diameter of a circle is perpendicular to a chord, um, then we know that the diameter bisects the chord and its arcs. So we would be able to say that this piece is equal to that piece. Uh, we would also be able to say that this chord here is congruent to this chord here. Um, so we can write that as F um, H is congruent to H D. Get the little segments on that, sorry. Uh, and then we could also say that arc F G is congruent to arc G D. And then the last little thing here, it says that in the same circle um, or in congruent circles, two chords are congruent if and only if they are equidistant from the center. Um, so if I told you, if I gave you this figure and I told you that AB was congruent to CD, um, that would be true if and only if GE, this little piece here, is equal to or congruent to EF. Um, so then here are a couple try questions here for you to try on your own. So if you want to take a moment, pause the video, try these out on your own. I'll show you the answers here in a sec. So those are the answers. How'd you do with them? Hopefully good. I'm Mr. Lineski. Thanks for watching. I know it, and now you know it.